Good morning. Welcome everyone for the class this morning. Uh, yes, good morning, Simran, Mangi, Kennedy. Uh, I would like to request one of you to please lead us in prayer. Anybody who's comfortable to do so. Okay, I will pray, Pastor. Yes, yes, please, Mangi. Thank you. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you just for this opportunity, Lord, to, to come and learn your word, Lord, to, to be instructed, Lord, in your, in your ways this morning. We pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit will guide us, Lord, and will help us look, absorb this material, Lord, so that they, They will bear fruit in our heart, Lord. Not only in our hearts, Lord, and also help us teach others, Lord. We pray all this, Father, in your mighty name, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Mangi, for that. Uh, and welcome once again, uh, all students. Thank you for joining this morning's class. We will continue from where we stopped. So we've been learning about... Uh, you know, the features of the apostolic and we came to this place where we are trying to understand what the present day apostolic ministry is going to do and what is it going to look like. So uh, we started with chapter four and then I began to, uh, you know, share with us that uh, the apostolic ministry is a pioneering ministry where uh, one takes on new territories, uh, not necessarily geographical ones, uh, and that, you know, a, a, an apostle is somebody who tends to be first, okay, or proton, first in terms of the timing uh, of uh, uh, entering into the the new territory or causing this expansion to take place. Uh, so, that, that's how we understood that. And then, you know, we continued to see that uh, the apostolic anointing lays a strong foundation for um, lasting works. So when it comes to church planting, we would see that, you know, uh, the foundations are laid for, you know, several churches to be planted and for them to be overseen uh, through the apostolic anointing. We also looked at the fact that you know, through this anointing, God uh, continues to execute his plans and purposes uh, with regard to regions, with regard to various spheres uh, in, in society. Then the apostolic anointing guards the doctrine. It establishes people in the whole council of God's word. Uh, it activates and equi equips people believers for spiritual ministry because you, you see it's one of the five uh, fivefold ministry offices and therefore you know the role is to equip the believers so that's what uh, it would do uh, we we saw that there is a great uh, role that the apostolic plays in providing leadership to emerging leaders so uh, emerging leaders are identified, they are uh, equipped, they are ordained, and then the uh, apostolic would continue to uh, be in touch and uh, you know, continue to lead and guide these leaders. Then establishing order in local churches is also something that uh, the apostolic anointing is uh, uh, related to because uh, uh, you see it's, it's not just about getting things moving but uh, getting them moving in line with the standard of God's word. That is again uh, a passion that the apostolic anointing has. So somebody who is leading you know, sets of churches or uh, a movement, you you would see that at the at the founding stage, such a person generally sets the uh, some of the standards in place, things like holiness, uh, purity, integrity, uh, all these principles help the, the growing movement, you know, to then kind of uh, use this and then plant their churches and continue to lead people 
as per the initial standards. Then apostles also speak to uh, uh, leaders and authorities around the world because God gives that uh, uh, stature and the open doors to uh, share about the gospel with with uh, you know it could be political leaders or it could be leaders in any other arena then uh, uh, apostles show godly independence you know, they tend to uh, they if they have a team well and good but even if they don't have a team you know they're the kind who are very daring and uh, you know they're willing to step out and do whatever it takes uh, you know, to, to establish God's kingdom. So that is something that we observe. Then apostles also uh, manifest supernatural signs and wonders. We've seen a lot of that in the Acts of the Apostles, uh, that through the hands of the apostles, you know, signs, wonders, miracles uh, took place. And uh, as we saw earlier uh, in um, the book of Acts, apostles also underwent persecution and they uh, endured through very, you know, very hard times and still continued to uh, take the, the gospel to new territories. Now, in the present day, we can expect the same thing. Imagine somebody who is pioneering, uh, they're not going to be spared, right? So they will uh, be a target for the enemy. They will be... Um, uh, you know, considered as disrupting the the existing way of life, and therefore there will be some sort of an opposition um, that an apostle would have to face. So, this is the way in which the apostolic will unfold in our present times. Now, again, we can't say that every person who is called as an apostle will display all the features of what I have just shared. You know, it could be some aspects. We might see that uh, a, a person is anointed, they uh, initiate a movement, and through them, you know, many churches are planted, and uh, primarily like a, a church planting movement starts off with this person, they set the standards, they have a teaching anointing to, to proclaim God's word, and uh, uh, you know uh, the the truth is revealed very clearly to the people, and based on this, you know, people are uh, doing well in in the uh, many local churches. So it could just look like a church planting movement, but a huge one. So then you know that this is an apostolic anointing. You may not see some of the other features you know you might not see that this uh, movement or the set of churches or the leaders here are communicating with political leaders or you know uh, leaders in some other uh, sphere of society but then we can't we can't uh, discredit the fact that you know one thing is happening uh, uh, which is of the apostolic anointing and so uh, it is definitely categorized under the apostolic. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that we might have a combination of a couple of these, these features in present day apostolic, and then you know that should be helpful enough for us to recognize that, okay, what we are seeing here is the uh, apostolic anointing. Okay, uh, now we'll continue to understand the present day apostolic. So once again, you know, you have uh, uh, a couple of points here describing what an apostle means. So it's a word study of uh, the word apostle. And over here, you know, it, it is uh, reiterated that it comes from the Greek word apostle, which uh, means to be sent forth. So one who is sent forth. And uh, it, this word is what is known as a transliteration from the Greek language, which simply means, you know, you take a word from another language and you just use it as it is with no or uh, minimum changes. Uh, and, and so the meaning which the original word had in, in the uh, previous language is applicable. So the word apostle, uh, it was used for, for people who went and took new territory and uh, it it is used for you know somebody uh, from uh, you know the greek or the roman empire who went and subdued uh, a new place that they have taken over uh, yeah, 
subdued everything you know their culture their uh, their language their uh, systems and they uh, imposed okay they imposed their own system so we're not talking about this in a uh, so much in a geographical or a territorial sense anymore but in the bible when we look at the term apostle it is a spiritual term so uh, because we understand about kingdom right the kingdom of god a spiritual perspective we know that we are not talking about uh, you know um, uh, unrighteously or forcefully uh, invading you know human systems so that's not at all what we are talking about why is it that we have to clarify this uh, simply because there's also some offshoots of uh, the apostolic teaching where uh, you know uh, they have different terms dominionism and um, uh, so you know there are certain teachings where people are taught that if you are a believer you have to uh, i mean it's okay to like you know invade and take over without the will of the people or in the present day context you have spheres of influence and then there's a lot of emphasis that uh, christians are the ones they have to be the leaders they they should not be in any other rank or order but you know they have to look for the the leadership position and they have to become the movers and shakers influencers and sort of you know take over uh, that sphere now uh, you know we we know where they're coming from but that's not how the bible actually teaches the apostolic okay so the the concept of uh, dominating the concept of uh, you know taking over every leadership uh, position especially political uh, christians have to be the politicians you no know, they just have to be all these things are uh, an extrapolation of uh, the apostolic you know what we what we are uh, studying here and it's not necessarily what the bible teaches so when we talk about the apostolic uh, and the 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 kingdom taking over we are talking more in a spiritual sense okay now uh, if let's say some believers end up being politicians or uh, ceos or you know generals of armies well and good but uh, every believer is not required to uh, you know do that so wherever the lord positions us plants us we can still display and release the apostolic through our lives so you know that's the understanding of the uh, word here now continuing uh, with that the yeah over here in the word study um there is an additional thing that you could note uh, point 7 here in in our notes it says that um the term apostle as used in in those days had to do with naval expeditions uh, and so again you know when when you when you consider what naval expeditions did uh, you would notice that you know they again they would go into new territory and uh, you know take the fleet go in there and wage war if required and uh, completely take over uh, a new land so you know that that uh, sense of taking over kingdom uh, kingdom rule and reign uh, is is uh, coming through once again over here okay so the word study you could you could um go through it by yourself i'm not going through it point by point because uh, so many so many things that we've already discussed you know it'll just uh, keep getting repeated and uh, it it might not be of um i mean it won't make the subject interesting so okay uh, uh point 9 here is also something that we can look at uh, basically it um shows us that there are certain terms that are similar to the apostle uh, okay so the the work that an apostle does of taking new territories you have um you have roles in christendom which do something very similar but then you know they are not an equal to an apostle so what are these roles or what are the the terms given to these roles a uh, missionary okay a missionary is also somebody who is sent out they go to a new place now if we know about missionaries um you know famous missionaries people like uh, um 
you know uh, eye dust cutter you have um, what uh, okay i'm just not getting names right now uh, how about you tell me some names uh, david livingston yeah can you give me some names of missionaries hudson taylor william carey okay do we have some names here on chat okay anyway so these are all names of missionaries now why can't we call these people as apostles good question isn't it because when we study the word apostle the word is to uh, be sent out okay so missionaries also sent out but then you know you have to compare the other features you know what about the governmental authority that one talks about uh, you know when we um, understand the apostolic now what about the ability to teach god's word bring revelation of the truth of god's word what about you know pioneering uh, new ministries so these are the additional features of the apostolic so if you compare uh, just missionary somebody who goes out to take the gospel with an apostle you would see that many features are missing now if a missionary ends up becoming an apostle well and good but you know we cannot say that an apostle uh, is equal to a missionary okay so we just compare these terms so there are other terms like reformer revivalist pioneer groundbreaker okay uh, even church planter you know you can have a church planter who probably plants a few churches but that person need not be an apostle okay so you know it's when we understand the features of an apostle thoroughly is when we we know what the apostolic anointing is all about so even if um, there are roles uh, that come close to the apostolic anointing you know they cannot be called as an apostle okay so yeah ground breaker uh, crusader messenger emissary Uh, representative these are all uh, terms apologist these are all terms that people use uh, for a certain function okay not necessarily an apostle now another very important thing about the word apostle is a uh, point 2 here in our notes which uh, describes it as a delegate okay a delegate so delegate is somebody who is vested with the authority by the sender so that also uh, is something that we have to be careful to understand so uh, an apostle is sent but sent with authority so that also adds you know depth to that word apostle okay um yeah all the other points are things that we have already discussed so you know i'm not going to go over the word study which has been given here for us uh, uh a different point or a unique point uh, is point 18 the notes which says that the concept of the apostle needs to be demystified uh, which simply means that you know when we study about an apostle uh, it's impressive you know that here is an individual who has the capacity to um break ground enter new territories and uh, you know get a movement started uh, get um, you know get the momentum of, uh, to to you know overthrow uh, the works of the enemy in that particular place or let's say you know it's a it's a system that we are talking about so bring about a transformation a reform of the system so seeing an ability of that sort you know, what tends to happen is that people put that individual or you know the office is that of an apostle the apostle on a pedestal and uh, look at that person as oh you know here are all these um, um just uh, exemplary uh, 
attitudes and capacities that this person has and uh, you know we we must give this individual a lot of honor and uh, you know they're treated like they are superhuman in many ways you know whenever you have an apostle people tend to give them a lot of respect now to honor um, whom god has honored is a good thing because that's what we are taught to do in god's word but to treat somebody uh, as if they were superhuman and you know to kind of do the honoring uh, to overdo the honoring is is not uh, right so even though an apostle is vested with uh, you know all these abilities and this uh, amazing anointing and if you go back and look at the apostles of the early church they were amazing they were leading the church they were teaching god's word they were traveling out they were um, you know uh, we we uh, said that god was doing mighty my signs wonders through the hands of the apostles the apostles would lay hands and miracles would take place so it was but natural for the people who were following to look up to these apostles and think uh, something is so different about these apostles and uh, you know that that we must we must um, you know honor them honor them and never forget who they are so you know you really hold them in high regard and that's true of the present day apostles as well because the anointing will manifest in that manner but then you know at the end of the day they are children of god they have been uh, redeemed just the way any other believer has been redeemed and uh, you know we we should not overdo we should not overdo the honoring part of the apostles Okay, so that's the point. So we recognize the gifting, we recognize the anointing, but uh, um, the apostle should not be treated as somebody you know, uh, so special as compared to every other uh, anointing that God has uh, released. Okay, so that is something new in that section there. So now coming to the 60 trends that will emerge um, with the full restoration of apostles and prophets. Uh, this is uh, a, a, again a study that has been included in our notes here. Uh, and as you go through these points, you would notice that you know, there is sense of a repetition once again here in these points. But I, I'll just try to bring out the unique points for us. OK. Uh, Okay, so I see some comments here uh, in our chat. So you've mentioned certain names uh, and I'm assuming you have uh, answered the question that I was asking about missionaries. It is an apostolic work, but not in a person. Okay, yes, that's fine. So uh, any, any questions, any thoughts at this point? Okay, uh, is this clarifying your idea of an apostle? Okay, great. All right, so I can see some feedback there. All right, so let's let's just move forward then. Yeah, coming to the trends here. So what? will we see when um, you know the apostolic uh, anointing begins to function in its fullness you know, we will see a great emphasis on signs wonders miracles okay across the body of christ because that is a feature of the early church isn't it so that uh, god's power was was released and the supernatural was very evident in the rising church and that will happen even in today's time and you know we are tending towards it we are moving towards it and you can as i'm talking you know all of us could think of um uh, we could think of this happening maybe in our part of the globe or you know, some other part of the globe and we could say hey yes you know god is doing this right now and he's pouring out his uh, uh, apostolic anointing and you know we can see this you know, coming coming together uh, so you know I, I'm just going to touch on these features and we will see a lot more uh, of all these features taking place in our midst in the days to come. So greater emphasis 
on signs wonders miracles there will be revelation okay, insight about the word of god because the apostolic carries that kind of a, uh, a teaching anointing where the truth will be broken down in such a way that the body of christ can uh, walk in it we will continue to see um out yeah expansion expansion of the church not just in the physical but also as i told you uh, in in different spheres of society systems um so you know non physical arenas as well you would see an expansion of the kingdom of god with a pioneering ability okay? pioneering ability as we saw in first corinthians 12:28 that um the apostle is first first apostle or proton so they will they will get into those spheres and uh, lead the other anointings so then the other anointings will come and begin to their do their work and what is the expected end the kingdom come god's kingdom will will take over uh, in that particular sphere or um, arena okay so we will also begin to see the emergence of new leaders and ministries so you know we rejoice in in what god has done so far but as we uh, move ahead we will be amazed that god has caused a nurturing No, through the apostolic uh, and new leaders have started to come on the scene uh, new ministries uh, have uh, emerged and not just emerged you know you would see that they too have been mentored really well and that they're doing a good work for the kingdom of god and how's all of this happening because the apostolic is sort of taking care of these new people these new ministries and they are now at a level or a stage where they can uh, really uh, be seen by people so the rising up of new leaders new ministries that is something that we will see uh, the enforcement of biblical standards for leadership you know there are a lot of great ministries praise god for that but then unfortunately you know sometimes we might see a a, a slacking standard uh, and you know for the apostolic it's it's really frustrating to see something like that and and also uh, it angers the apostolic to see fallen standards so what does the apostolic anointing do they would step in and they would uh, try to correct the wrong okay, correct the fallen standards um uh, for example okay yeah so in the yeah i don't know which which year it is but there was something called as the shepherding movement that took place i think it was the 90s and it was it was really a, a good thing that was happening in the in the global church where where people were taught to adopt other new believers under them under their wings and to train them disciple them in the uh, the word of god so this is nothing new you know even jesus had done that he had taken 12 uh, people and trained them as his disciples but then what began to happen through this whole shepherding movement is that you know it went to an extreme where uh, beyond just helping one become a, a disciple of christ and uh, you know um, to to step into their calling uh, the leaders were actually controlling the lives of these disciples so you know when it came to things like uh, Uh, what career to choose uh, whether to buy a home or not where to live um, uh, you know whom to marry the leaders were dictating terms so uh, the the movement ran into trouble and it it was really not you know something that uh, uh, it it should have been so you see there's something good that emerges but then the standards you know, maybe over a period of time uh, you you see that you know it it's not aligning to what the bible really says so these kind of standards have to be set right so it took 
the uh, interference of of many leaders and in fact uh, some of the leaders who were part of the movement themselves stepped down and they said hey we no longer want to be a part of this movement because this is not right this is not as per the character of god and and the truth of god's word uh, so the standard in that good so called good ministry which had risen up you know, needed to be corrected so what does the apostolic do it tends to step in and make the amendments make the changes and you know it it really um asks god's people to be accountable so that things are set right so as we you know uh, look at what god is doing in the world through the apostolic anointing we will see that you know there is a call to rise up to the right standards and that's what apostles will do um yes they will be happy about new ministries and new leaders but they'll hold them accountable and say okay come on you know we're doing ministry how are we doing it you know, can we do it um with righteous um standards and principles and things like that so uh yeah i i think i'll just leave it at that now moving forward um, we uh, point 5 here says enforcement of biblical standards for leadership okay so just in line with what i i i said about um standards in the in the ministries standards with regard to a leader's lifestyle okay uh, because when you see the way paul mentored timothy you know, he uh, taught him about what kind of a leader he should be and when it came to timothy select leaders for the church you know he spells it out a bishop should be like this these should be his his um, you know spiritual standards and these should be his uh, moral standards in first timothy 3 if you look that up uh, so there will also be an emphasis on the right standards for a leader okay. and and uh, the apostolic is is passionate about having the right standards even for a leader Okay, so we we will see a, a lot more of this emerge. Okay, now moving forward, um, greater emphasis on spiritual warfare uh, is also something that we we will see. So you see what we are discussing right now are trends. Okay, or uh, um, the section here says emerging trends. So. we might have some reference to things like this that are already taking place but then you know uh, for those of us who haven't yet seen uh, or don't have examples of uh, these things you know we we can just um, observe the global body of christ and you know we will begin to see uh, these standards emerge so there'll be a greater emphasis on spiritual warfare why simply because when you talk about taking new territory or taking new ground you know it you just don't take new ground without fighting the enemy and who is this spiritual enemy that we're talking about right ephesians 6 12 says we uh, war not against flesh and blood but against principalities powers of darkness so a feature of the apostolic has definitely got to be spiritual warfare because unless we rise up in prayer unless we rise up in prophetic intercession you know unless we rise up in making decrees and uh, um you know all of those things how are you going to see how how, you, how will you uh, see the 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 stronghold of the enemy fall and how will you even take over new territory so spiritual warfare you know, it's a huge part of the apostolic and uh, we will see more and more of spiritual warfare and taking on of new territory there will be greater endurance uh, for a uh, persecution that will arise against uh, the apostolic movement which is understood there will be uh, great boldness on the part of the apostles and uh, you know the apostolic people of god who continue to do god's work there will also be a greater release of resources for the kingdom of god you know when you talk about expansion there is a need isn't it there is a need of financial resources there is a need for um human resources in terms of uh, well equipped leaders well equipped believers and you know god is doing that at uh, at this time that you know people are being prepared their hearts are being prepared um um the the 
you know financial resources whatever it is that that is required for kingdom work you know those things are mobilized into the work of god so you know, we will see more of this taking place around us we will see the emergence of uh, new churches so uh, part of the apostolic is the church planting movement so there will be many new churches that will arise and not only that there will also be the strengthening of existing churches so how can we say that the existing churches are strengthened strengthened in the revelation of god's word strengthened in the work of the spirit you know maybe they are not uh, the ones to to move in the supernatural but you know today we have teaching right we have a lot of teaching about the prophetic we have a lot of teaching about the gifts of the holy spirit and as god is equipping his people around the world churches will step into you know, these new zones and and see the manifestation of god's power so in this manner churches will be strengthened and not just you know the 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 supernatural aspect but also moral um, standards uh, as as you know the apostolic emphasizes hey we need to have the right personal standards we need to have the right spiritual standards the right moral standards you will see that there are uh, good leaders that are being trained up in the churches and so churches are being strengthened so we'll have new churches as well as the existing churches will be strengthened you know in various ways we'll also see uh, an atmosphere of liberty because there will be a, a greater uh, there will be an openness for the work of the holy spirit uh, through these the uh, understanding right of god's word there will be content there will be a contending against heresy uh, because the apostolic is passionate about right doctrine now again going back to acts 15 when the apostles heard about circumcision uh, they it says that they they contended or you know they were um, in a fight or they were arguing with the people who were teaching the wrong, wrong doctrine so the apostolic will not keep quiet when there are um, uh, wrong things floating around and uh, it will rise up and it will bring correction to um, uh, lies and deception in the body of Christ. Okay, so that is something that we would see. We will also see that as teaching uh, improves, as a new truth is brought to the body of Christ, there will be you know, many um, believers rising up uh, by embracing their destiny okay so uh, it it really will strengthen the body of christ at large because you can observe every believer understanding that hey i have uh, god has a plan for my life and god has a call and an anointing for me so you know uh, the in church history we've understood that at one point there was laity and there was clergy Okay, so the clergy would do their work and the laity would just follow the instructions of the clergy. But in the church today, as the Spirit of God is moving and all these anointings are being poured out, the pastors know their role as leaders, but the believers also are recognizing their part. Now, some of them might completely dedicate themselves within the you know, four walls of the church and serve in full-time ministry. But other believers will recognize their role, whatever it is. Maybe it's out there in the world, in the marketplace. Uh, but they will embrace it and they will begin to make a difference for God, even in the uh, workplace. So, you know, that is what we're talking about. So as God strengthens the apostolic anointing, we will see every believer embracing their call, embracing their purpose, being equipped, uh, not just personally being strong, but stepping into ministry you know, one way or the other. So we will also see that um, you know, there will be a great um, there will be uh, a 
great openness for the supernatural, even among believers. You know, I, I said that they will embrace their call, but they will also be ready to function with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, there will be a sense of uh, a boldness. There will be a sense of reverence and fear towards the things of God. Because that, again, you know, that's a feature of the apostolic. If you uh, recall in Acts 5, when uh, Ananias and Sapphira, they, they wanted to do their own thing and they did not fear God. What happened at that time brought a sense of reverence towards God. You know, they, they were judged for their wrongdoing. Uh, and what did that do? The fear of God spread among the people and they understood you know, who God really is and how we must honor God through our lives uh, and our decision. So the apostolic will, if I may put it this way, restore the fear of God among God's people in today's time and age. Okay, uh, So that again is a feature of the apostolic and we will see that. There will be a great release of uh, prayer and intercession, and that has to do with spiritual warfare. And then, you know, that leads to taking new territories. There will be uh, um, an increase in fasting because that, again, you know, has to do with uh, humbling ourselves before God, uh, receiving being strengthened in our faith, receiving greater grace from God, and you know that again leading to uh, spiritual warfare, and then. Uh, entering into new territories. There will be an encouragement of individuals and uh, churches to embrace a more global vision and a sending mentality. Okay, So um, the apostolic is about stepping out. The apostolic is about uh, being sent forth or delegated. So you know, this, this thing about uh, not just being a happy local church, but considering the world as our mission field okay uh, that will happen all the more now we've seen that this is nothing new we we've seen it all along you know even uh, from the 18th century we can talk about uh, many missionaries when we spoke about um the the revival of uh, what is that place uh, count zinzendorf the Moravian revival, yeah, the Moravian revival. We read that the ratio of a missionary to um, uh, the number of people, it increased because uh, it became a sending out base, the Moravian church, if you want to call it. So what what really happened? You know, this, this thought process of, hey, we can meet and we can learn God's word and we can be strengthened. You know, it went from just that to we can take what we have and we can impact the world so you know people were sent out to many different parts of the world and you know you can trace back the impact of the moravian revival um, over people like uh, you know john wesley william carey you know, who is the father of modern missions here in india uh, and also you know there are roots uh, to the welsh revival uh, the Moravian revival, uh, you know, you, you can kind of um, uh, see the influence of, of uh, to the Welsh revival and then the um, impact of the Welsh revival on India, you know, the northeastern part of India. Uh, there was a huge uh, impact. So what's happening? You know, it, it's like a ripple effect. And people beginning to understand that what God is pouring out in our midst, we can take it. We can go to uh, other parts of the world and we can impact those parts of the world for the kingdom of God. So the apostolic anointing carries that within itself, you know, sending forth, uh, sending out, being a delegate. So we would see a lot more of... Uh, the churches of today sending people out. Okay, so uh, like a local church, you might have people from the local church stepping out on missions. They'll go to uh, different parts of India and then, you know, uh, then even going to other parts of uh, the world, uh, taking the truth that we have learned and imparting it into other local churches, other leaders, ministries in other parts of the world. So uh, to have churches like this, you know, we'll see later, you know, such churches are known as apostolic churches. 
okay apostolic churches so a church we in our previous course we said that a church can grow in its understanding of the prophetic and become a prophetic church okay so similarly a uh, regular you know if you want to call it a normal church can also become an apostolic church because that's the kind of understanding and vision which god is bringing to the people of god today so in the days to come if you find that every other church around you is sending people to different parts of the world and uh, you know churches are being planted there don't be surprised because that is the apostolic anointing which god is pouring out and the understanding of the apostolic that the believers are being equipped in and therefore you know taking on new territory you know going to new regions of the world will just be normal okay it'll just be part of uh, the the way churches function okay so uh, this is something that we are seeing right now and we are going to see a lot more of this taking place and more intensely uh, if i might say in the days to come so a global vision even a simple a church in some obscure place can have a global vision and they could be sending out men and women of impact to uh, different parts of the world so that sending out mentality will emerge and you know we will um, see apostolic churches okay so uh, as we look at uh several other points here it's kind of a repetition of what we have been saying so far uh but one unique point that you would observe here is um it says that there will be an emphasis on, on the truth but there will also be an emphasis on the care uh of um you know the um uh, communities or people in need so this can be people in need financially you, you could say uh, the poor people or it can be people in need in any other way it could uh, be some sort of a, a a a community that has been um treated uh, ill treated okay so there there's been some sort of an injustice towards a minority community it could be that kind of a community so in these 50 trends that uh, uh, john eckerd has uh, enlisted the other unique point here is that as we see the church emerge and a movement emerge impacting you know various territories you will also see um uh, a sort of a uh, compassionate side of the apostolic where uh, the needy will be helped the people who have experienced injustice in some way you know, minorities social injustice uh, you would see god you know touching those communities as well and and uh, you know doing good to the people who have experienced uh um you know some some kind of an uh, evil so that is the only other unique point here in our uh, in our list of 45 points so i'm not going to go through every single point else you know you you would think that uh, you know points are being repeated uh, time and again so what i would uh, suggest is if you could please take uh, about half an hour and just go through all these points tomorrow's class i will start by answering questions from these 50 um, uh, features of, of the emerging trends of the apostolic i think that will be better that way we will be more focused in addressing new aspects of the apostolic and then it will help us move on to the new uh, the next few chapters in our notes as well okay so please read up and uh, let's start with a time of questions the first 10 minutes and then you know i'll go on to cover the uh, subsequent chapters here so for today i think we'll close right here since it's uh, 9:49 uh, i request one of us to please pray and then we can close off today's class would anyone like to volunteer Okay, I'll pray again. Okay, yeah, yeah, Mangi, please. Okay, thank you, thank you, Pastor. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, 
We thank you, Lord. We thank you that we've come to, to the end of this class today. We pray, Jesus, that you'll be with us until we meet again tomorrow, Lord. In, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Yeah, thank you, Mangi. Thank you for that. And thank you, everyone, for joining today. And uh, yeah, let's uh, meet tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. God bless.